What's up everybody, it's CMP with Craftmaster Productions and Studio12Tutorials.com. Don't forget to stop by Studio12Tutorials, pick up your premium membership, it's 50 cents a day. Also, please stop by CMPKits.com, get familiar with my new Ripcord presets from the Life of a Don album album of the year contender inside this bundle you also have the industry slap volume 2 drum kit you've got the chord midi you've got the drum midi for the entire album scalar presets rip chord presets everything you need to know but today let's talk about what we came to talk about and that is this amazing software uh, by Hit and Mix Studios. This is called RipX. Uh, I'm using the deep remix version of this um, and basically you guys are probably familiar with RX-8 where you can take and um, use music rebalance to um, either take out one of four elements, right? The drums, the, uh, I think it's the drums, percussion, voices, and bass, right? You got, I think it's four or five elements, right? So uh, the first difference between like an RX-8 and RipX is RipX will give you, depending on how much how much information it detects with its algorithm it, it'll give you like the names of the instruments like it'll give you the violin the guitars the voice the bass drum the percussion and the drums out out of it and it also gives you a mixer to rebalance all that stuff and on top of that on top of that on top of that it's super easy to use inside studio one so let me let, let's just look at it and i can show you how i use it right so Perfect example. I've got this sample right here and, um, you know, I made this beat. And if you're like me, a lot of, you know, and, and you sample, sometimes you overlook or you don't use samples because they have drums in it, especially like if you're doing trap stuff where it's uh, something that sounds more like this. Cause you know, it could be hard to line up or, you know, match the type of snares that we use to this, right? So you think, man, I wish I could get that kick and that snare out of it. Well, it's super easy with, um, with this software, right? So all I got to do is it functions as an event effect, right? Which is really cool. Um, so if you just open up your inspector window with this eye, you click on the region, right? And where it says event effects, just go ahead and enable that and go to your insert type in rip link or just type in rip. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna give you this little guy right here. What you wanna do is just click on that. That is going to open up this software and now you're gonna have a choice. You're gonna say, what do you want to extract? Like if you just want the vocals from, you know, fr from a sample that you're using, man, all you gotta do is just that and it'll just give you the vocals. But what I want is I want everything because I want to kind of remix this sound, right? So let me just go ahead and do that and we'll rip it. And I'm going to leave this going in real time so you can see how fast this is compared to some of the other stuff you might be using. So it's telling us that we have less than a minute left. Let's see if that's cap. It's already almost halfway through. And I can't wait for you guys to see the type of information that this gives back, especially if you're, um, you know, familiar with me and my channel and you know, like how much I like Melodyne, um, you know, you, you're going to, you're going to see pretty quickly that we have like a similar situation, right? So we have the piano roll here and what, what we're going to be given is we're going to be giving, you know, a visual representation of each of the signals. And then also um, when you line that up with the piano roll grid, it's going to be able to display like what notes are there. So you can use this, you know, to, um, to, you know, grab chords, bass lines, um, things of that nature. And uh, on top of that, this is not only does it um, sit in, for um you know something something like rx8 like if you're looking at rx8 and you don't have it already um if you were thinking about getting melodyne this is like the two of those plugins put together which is pretty exciting because typically you know you look at the price of uh, of both of them you know it's like a thousand dollars worth of software this is significantly less right okay so if you look down here on the mixer you'll see that i that it's telling me there's a voice i mean there's no voice in this sample but we'll forgive them right but it's it, what the computer thinks is a voice right so you have the voice the guitar the bass the kick drums the drums and percussion so this is exciting it's it's picked up three elements of percussion right so i can really get granular with this mix now 
if you play what's in Studio One, you'll notice it's not linked to um, to what's happening in this window, right? So when you're working, you know, when you're working with your material, you're gonna want to, you know, you're gonna want to um, listen here first, right? So use this play button. And let's just go ahead and let's loop this up. Let me just go ahead and we want to turn, let's turn down the kick drum first, see what that sounds like. So that's great. <laughs> the kick drum is completely gone. Let's go ahead and add a little bit more in there. See what it sounds like. So like for something like the kick drum, cause I'm already have like a high pass filter on the sample in the track for something like the kick drum. What I want to do is just take, I, I, you know, you can remove it all the way and that's a cool trick, but you know, a pro tip is to just, it's just to turn it down until you can barely hear it. You're going to have a low pass filter anyway. Most of, or, or a high pass filter anyway, most of that information is going to be in the lower frequencies. So, and there's going to be frequencies that overlap with that kick drum. So to make it sound as natural as possible, rather than just completely muting it, blending it like that is going to be a much better option. Let's go ahead and look at uh, some other some other elements, right? So let me go ahead and just we'll take the drums out completely and see what this sounds like. So if you listen, that's the snare, right? And I'm just gonna go ahead and drag that down a little bit further. Let's let's take this percussion out and see what it sounds like. All right, now once now once we take that percussion element out, you know this is this is starting to sound unnatural and that's not good music, right? So let me just let me go ahead and add a little bit more of that back in. Okay, and now I'm going to play with the mix of of the stuff up top. All right, so I like this sound. I want to hear it in context though, right? That's, all right, so in order to hear it in context, guys, it's super easy. You just go back into your render or, or in your event effects window inside Studio One. If you're not familiar with Studio One event effects, they are really powerful. You should get to know them. So you just go ahead and you don't, I'm sorry, you don't hit render. What you do here is you select update in Studio One. So you want to make sure you have the RIPX, um, software selected, the RIPX toolbar, go ahead and select update in Studio One, right? So now we haven't, this isn't a destructive edit yet. We've used it inside, we're still inside the RIPX software. We've made our changes. This way we can hear our stuff in context and we don't have to commit to it yet, right? So let's listen. All right, and that's got that's got all the drums and the percussion out of the way. I'm listening to it a little bit and I feel like I feel like you know what? I can bring you know, I can bring this drum track up just a little bit. I feel like we're you know, we're getting kind of muffled here. This percussion track, I'm a, I'm going to bring it back up, right? I'm going to make the change. So, let me go here and let's hear it in context again. Update in Studio 1. You'll see this plugin move to the forefront. All right, see that's much better, and that's and that's what's important about this workflow. In the other, in your other options, if you were to, if like say you were inside of RX eight, you could not make an adjustment. And plus, you know how long it takes to. <laughs> if you use RX eight, you already know how long it takes to do that, right? So this, I was able to make an adjustment on the fly. Listen to it in context, in context, which is huge. 
All right. We're listening to it in context. And now when I want to commit, all I have to do is hit render. Right. And then you see, look at that. All, all of the transients are gone. I just, I just have my smooth sample here. And what I'm noticing now, now that I'm not stacking with that other snare, I'm, I'm, I'm listening to this snare choice that I use and I'm like, you know what? I don't really like this snare. I want to go in another direction. So that's really the value of a tool like this, right? Especially, especially if you're making, you know, the sample based trap kind of stuff that's uh, a lot of people are interested now is especially ever since Metro did his video, um, you know, with million dollars worth of game and people and people seen him sampling vinyl, you might be more inclined to, you know, hop on track lib and use these and use these sounds and you're going to run into a situation where you're stacking over drums and they're going to clash with the trap sounds hit you know this ripex um software just is so it's the easiest thing to use that is on the market you get the quickest results and i'm telling you being able to listen to the stuff in context without having to open up another software wait a million years for it to process four bars only to put it in only to put it in your DAW, and then be like yeah no this sounds awful in context man so this is super valuable i'm so glad that i got this and i really think you know they have a demo on the site you don't have to take my word for it. Go try the demo. I think they give you like uh, they give you like two weeks or something to, to to mess with it. It's fully featured. It doesn't cut out. Um, and I'm running this on an M1 Mac. It's on Rosetta, um, on Big Sur, right? And I don't and I don't have no problems. Super easy to use, right? So this is CMP with Craftmaster Productions Studio One Tutorials.com. I want you guys to keep it simple, but do not be basic. And we'll see you on the next one.